Good morning. Welcome to the vlog. Today is Thursday, um, June 16th, and this week's been pretty slow. Um, I haven't done a whole lot. Well, I have done a lot, but not anything that you would probably want to see. So I spent the, the day yesterday um, downloading all of the FV1 software. Um, there's a program called SpinCAD, which kind of can get you like a good start in the coding side of the um, FV1 platform. And then I um, had to get the Spin ASM downloaded and just kind of familiarize myself with the software. So with software, um, I'm in no way an IT guy. So I also don't really use Windows. It took me longer to figure out how to get everything on the computer than to actually um, get a patch going. And uh, yeah, it was it was a little bit of a boring day, but I'm set up now. Um, Pretty much, I'm set up now to begin kind of um, customizing the tone and sound, and I will light. I will have to get a breadboard in here um, in a little while to basically add. There, so with the FV1, you get um, three control parameters, and I'm not going to waste one of those on uh, a mix control. So I'll use like um, just kind of. An alternative mix control and the way that there is um, likely like pre-delay right now and all of these the reverb patches that I'm doing um, there's quite a bit of lag time so I think that pretty much has to do with the signal being fully wet and there, there's no dry signal coming through so your notes aren't really um, they're not coming through, you know, immediately. There's there's a delay there, and I'm in a good place now where I have a couple of good patches um, that I have the tone and everything worked out, um, where we could pretty easily bring it into production. But I will not have a great feel for it until I get a mix control at minimum. So we'll probably be doing that in a little while. So, essentially, basically what this is, is it is a, um, it's a, a chip that supports a reverb, so you can do um, reverb, delay, you can do pitch shifting, octaves, you can do a lot of different stuff with it, but uh, I typically prefer analog, um, I mean DSP is great, but I prefer like octaves, I really love an analog octave, um, transformer octave, and for um, reverb, there's really not there's really not a great way to accomplish what I want to accomplish without utilizing this platform at least um, partially. So it will not be like a straight F1 or F1 type of thing, but it will house an FV1 and utilize some of the technology. So basically you can without really much coding knowledge you can um, create what they call patches and really rudimentary uh, in a really rudimentary style kind of just line things up um, almost like you know, coloring inside the lines and send it to a development board, which is um, what I have here. And that gives you a good idea of what it will sound like. And um, then you can go in and kind of fine tune the, the smaller things like uh, frequencies and um, delay time and things like that. So right now, this morning, I was working on a hall reverb.
Not sure what that was. Um, that was something. So that's like a pretty good start. Um, that's a much more lush reverb than you could accomplish with a Belton brick, um, in my opinion. I, I've gone down this reverb rabbit hole for years now, being that reverb is my favorite. Um, and uh, there, there's a few reverbs that I really like that use a Belton, like um, the Ghost Echo by uh, Earthquaker Devices. That's a fantastic reverb, um, but it's not it's not something that I can use for everything. Um, it, it's something that I can kind of add on top of other reverb for to like further the effect or get a little echo. Um, and I've never played like a belt and brick reverb that I was just floored by. I found some that I enjoyed and I would use them occasionally, but I I want to make something that can live on my board at all times. And this is the best platform um, for me to go without or with with the not the knowledge and the uh, understanding of the technology that I have and I have played several FV1 reverbs and um, they're really nice there there's a, a noise floor issue in my opinion with a lot of them um, that I will basically the 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 signal is really quiet and then when you when you add gain and try to bring up the level um, it, it becomes pretty noisy but since that is something that I've noticed previously with with other reverbs um, on that platform I believe that it should be pretty easy to figure that out um, you know n not like if I hadn't noticed that, then it may happen to me, but I will, um, it's something I'll pay special attention to. So, yeah, it, it, it's pretty fun to do it. Um, I don't know that I will use this chip, you know, people use it for, um, like harmonic tremolo and e I, I'm pretty sure I've seen a few people using it for overdrive now, which I, I fully don't understand. Um, why but I don't I don't know that I'll use it for much but I will definitely be using it for this reverb and I will likely use it for a delay um, for the delay I will probably use two chips because it I can tell you now like with the the patches that I've worked on yesterday um, there's not really enough um, delay RAM for me and it'd probably be fine for most people but the only time I use delay is in like a very 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 wet um, kind of ambient setting and I want really really long trails and um, this does not quite do it with a single chip um, but that's for the, another time I'm, I'm not worried about the delay yet so I will, uh, I'm going to keep playing around with this for a little while today, and then we have um, some orders to ship out, and I think that's about it. Uh, the next few days are pretty much going to be me finalizing some of this stuff, and then I will take you through um, kind of what it takes to get the enclosure ready to go to print and uh, the milling and everything like that. So, thanks. So you've probably figured it out by now. I can't just simply uh, have that shit sitting on my desk um, or my coffee table in that case. So what I have here is a mix control. A mix control that was designed by um, my friend Digger who is going to help me with all this. Um, we've got just a simple platform to get to the amp and this is the FV1 dev board. So basically this is my breadboarding station. And I don't breadboard that often. Um, well, that's not supposed to fall out, but regardless. So you've got just a basic breadboard and then you have um, 
any pot value that you could want and easily connected um, with alligator clips or whatever else and this smaller board here is a permanent um, just like my soft touch switching so it's permanent in and out um, so I can just run it to this board where I will do like the actual circuit work and then I have space over here for um, if I use other breadboards but typically if I breadboard um, I do it for functionality uh, with tone which is the the thing that I spend the most time on would just be um, getting the tone correct and a breadboard is a, a really bad telling of that anyway um, they're noisier they're just it doesn't work um, so typically I will check function on the breadboard and then I'll move straight to PCB um, and with PCBs that, that's where I'll do like the heavy lifting um, for prototyping so the objective here is um, this is kind of what I'm going to be working on for a little while so I want to create a I guess um, kind of a just add this FV1 stuff to it and um, trying to think of the best way to do that I have some double sided tape and I can just like literally just stick it to it but I don't know that that would be the best way to go about it um, because I, I don't need it to be like super permanent but I need it to be permanent enough where basically if, if I'm working on this and anywhere you're working on it it's not going to be comfortable there's going to be like wires and um, stuff's going to be falling around or falling off of the desk um, so with me if, if that's going on while I'm working on it I'm going to be way more concerned about why is my shit falling everywhere and why is it not straight than um, like what actually happens so gotta straighten it up Okay, so I was trying to find some um, screws. I was trying to find some, uh, they're pick guard screws, and I have an entire box somewhere that I cannot locate. Got them. So, when you have this much stuff everywhere, it takes a while to find stuff. So, I basically have a few pick guard screws, and um, these have mounting holes, if you can see. So, that means this is just plywood. I can put holes in it and it does not matter. It's better than using double-sided tape. I may use double-sided tape, Because, I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. And it may kind of help stabilize it a little bit. But I'm just going to add, like, a little bit of double-sided tape. And I won't take off the, uh, I won't take off the paper from the other side. So, kind of acts as a cushion more than anything so that is perfect
Okay, so we're pretty well set up. This is the uh, semiconductor, the spin semiconductor development board. So we are basically running the RCAs from that into an external mix control. So I can test that out in real time basically. And then from the mix control we go to this uh, tap tempo development board. So we just have to plug in our 9 volts and uh, run it to our guitar and amp and we're good to go. This makes me much happier. Um, in addition, I can always run something over here um, on this breadboard if that makes things easier uh, in the future. So, nothing too permanent, but keeps everything kind of clean and out of the way. So I'm back to working on Amazon. So, this has been um, over a week of various things. Essentially, I signed up and they say well you need to verify your address so they send me a code in the mail I put the code in after a couple days getting it put the code in and they say okay well now we need to verify this and wait a couple days well now we need to verify this so there hasn't been any point where I can do everything in a row and um, while I'm waiting on like verifications I can't even like upload drafts of my listings and uh, I finally got everything verified with my banking info and um, my tax IDs and everything and then well your company needs uh, we need to verify I guess the, legit the legitimacy of the company so that was two days and it has just been non-stop so I think I had to get like UPC codes um, I bought those I think I am close to done so we will see So we'll see if it finally uh, works and I can get a listing out. Zero listings. So anyways, this is probably not going to be done today. Maybe, but given what I've had to do so far, it's going to take a little while, which I guess is... Um, it's not efficient, so I'm assuming they're weeding out some of, like, the bullshit. But at the same time, you know, they're, they're going to make money whether people sell or not. So it kind of doesn't make sense to make it that difficult. But who knows? So whenever... Um, Whenever everything is on Amazon and it's done and uh, good to go, I'll put a link somewhere. I'm also working on getting um, a firm, which is a, um, it's kind of a pay-as-you-go service, so you can do installments. So basically, upon checkout, you can pay in like three or four installments or there's just different options for you to pay um, with low interest so almost like having a credit to my store so that would be good as well and hopefully in a couple weeks that'll all be done uh, so I'm about I am about to be done for the day I'm gonna work on Amazon ship orders and then I need to clean <clears throat> so Today's Thursday, as I mentioned. Friday, me and Henry are going to hang out. Um, I'm not going to work other than shipping orders. So the shop has got to be clean before I leave. Um, pretty spotless or else when I come in Monday, I'm going to be uh, stressed 
about the state of things. So that's what I'm going to do.